So if you're on this channel, you're probably like me and you think programming is super cool. And you probably also know that we have so many languages available. We have Python, we have C++, C Sharp, Java, Swift, Kotlin, Bash, Assembly, JavaScript, and hundreds, if not thousands more that I can't think of right now. But I would put down money that you have never heard of emoji code. That's right, emoji code. It's exactly what you're thinking about. It's a language that lets you use emojis to code. So of course, today, we're gonna be building a program using emojis. Okay, so at the time of making this video, Emoji Code is currently on version one beta two. And even though it's on its early stages, the documentation is actually pretty extensive. So because of it, I thought it best to keep the program simple. So we're actually gonna be building a program that just takes user input in the form of names and then stores those names in the list. Now, I know, I know it's not the most algorithm packed AI powered, super impressive piece of code. But believe it or not, because emoji code is actually unlike any program that I've ever seen, it's actually not as straightforward as you might think. So the first thing you'll notice here is that emoji code actually uses kind of an interesting syntax here. Um, as you'll see, this right here is a flag. And this is to show that it's the start of every single program. So at the beginning of every program, you must have this flag. And this here is actually a code block, right? So I don't know why they chose these uh, emojis, but for whatever reason, I'm sure there's some rationale behind it. But the grape is the how you start the, the block for coding. And then the watermelon down here actually is how you end it. So let's call this names. This is actually the extension for the files that you use. It's a grape again. And then, or you could go with the emo emoji C, right? This is the file extension. But of course we want to go with the emoji because that's, that's the whole point of it. So we'll go with that here and we'll call this names dot, dot um, grapes. I think that's the way you go say, right? Names dot grape. So we'll go with that. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually go ahead and make a list. So if we actually go to the documentation here for emoji code at the guide at the very beginning where you're first making your first program here, it's just compiling run your first program. Down here at the bottom, there's actually a here. There's a way of making lists, right? This is how you make lists. So to make a list, you actually need to go ahead and use this popcorn emoji. And then inside of it, you put all your list items. And at the end of it, you use an eggplant. Now, something that's really interesting that I haven't seen before in a different language is that usually when you declare a variable of whatever type it might be, you usually use your variable here. And then over here, you have your actual value for a variable, right? So like, for example, let's say you're declaring an integer, integer number equals five. That's the way you use it everywhere. That's the way it works. But with emoji code, it's actually reversed. And the first thing you do is you put your value here for your variable, and then you put the variable name. However, this won't work for our purposes. This list is actually not mutable, meaning we can't actually make changes to it, which we will need to do because we're taking user input. So we have to have a way to actually go ahead and change this list. And here's an example of how to create a list. So the way you read this is it's new, right? Like any programming languages, any statically typed or strongly typed language, you have new, then uh, the type of item, and then this is the list, and then this is the type of item the list takes. And all this exclamation point is saying is that we're not providing it with any arguments. This is like assigning, right? This is an assignment operator, so like an equal sign. And then this is just saying new and threats actually the name of the uh of the list in this case uh one thing i want to point out is that we have this crayola looking thing and this basically is just a way for us to declare that the list itself is actually mutable meaning we could actually go ahead and change it so i'm actually just gonna go ahead and take this thing here and then just kind of yank it and put it here because i'm not gonna sit here and um basically <laughs> type every single emoji out um, but one thing is that this is a different type we actually want to use a strings. We want strings because we're going to be collecting a list of names here. Right here, there is a way to use string literals. And that is this using the ABC, which is pretty self-explanatory, right? That's how you declare. Basically, these are like open and closing quotes for a string. And then let's change the name of this to names. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to actually go ahead and essentially do an infinite loop. That way I could go ahead and keep taking input from the user uh, as he put it in and then store that into there. Over here under control flow, I believe is where it is. Yep, there it is. So we have a loop, right? We have a repeat while. And this right here is your infinite loop. It's like the loop emoji, the circle run, which makes again, perfect sense. And then you have this up sign, like plus, like in the end, like forever, like good. Basically that's like saying true from what I get from it. And then you have your cold block again. So that's, we have a cold block. So I'm gonna go ahead and just yank this again. Um, and then what I'll do here is now uh, I actually want to go ahead and take input from the user, right? So for this, again, we're going to use a new keyword here. 
to actually go ahead and um, get uh, a new object, create a new object here. So we'll put that right there. And we want this to be of type strings, which I see now that I actually made a mistake here. This ABC is actually the way you declare a string. So like, you know, like quotes, but it's not a string type. This is actually the string type here. Uh, it's like ABCD. It's the same thing, but it just looks a little differently, just like that. And then I hear, like I said before, we're creating a new string. And then there's an argument that it takes. So we guys should take input, which looks like this. Uh, this is like a listening, you know, like an ear. So it's listening for input. And then like before, we're going to take this up here, this uh, thing used to declare variables. And we're going to go ahead and give this a name because we have to be able to use it again, right? So we'll put that there. And for this one, I'm going to just call it user input. Now, since we have the list and now we essentially have input, what I want to do now is actually take that input and put it into the list. So the way you do that is you use the bear like that. And then you go ahead and use uh, the name. So in this case, it's names. That's the name of our list that we want to append to. And then from there on, you tell it what you want to append. In this case, we want to take that user input like that. Now, for the very final thing I want to do here is I want to actually go ahead and just print it out, right? Because I want to know that it's actually in there. We want to go ahead and loop through the list, like just like they have it right here. As you see this, they have a list and it's just loop through it and print out name. So that's exactly what I want to do like that. And then what I do, obviously, uh, my list is actually called names. So let's put that with names and that should do it. So if we go back here and quit this, what we can do is uh, use the emoji code compiler here like that. And then just use names that grapes that went perfectly fine. Uh, and now actually I could run it just by go ahead and running that program like that. And obviously we don't see anything here because I didn't put any print statements, but I could, for example, put my name and there you go. And it printed out, right? So now let's do Tom and there we go. It's printed out just like you would expect. But again, if you go back into this program here, I mean, if I were to look, if you were to give me this, and be like, I have a problem with my code. Can you help me with it? I'd be like, what the hell is this? Like, you know, one last thing we could do here is just to make it kind of nicer is actually just go ahead and put some print statements. That way we know what we're looking at. Okay, so here we go. For the sake of it, I added some things here so we could actually see what it's doing, right? This, uh, the mouth is basically the same thing as print, but it makes it so that the enter your name statement, it's on the same line. That way you don't have a new line when you're entering your text. And then on here, this is just a print statement. Again, I use a smiley face to print things like we did before here with the name. And I have one more down here just for the sake of readability. Then we'll compile that again like that. And then we'll run it again like that. So now we actually have a nice prompt here like that. And it tells us the name. So let's do Tom like that. So there you go. So now we have that and it tells us the name. So pretty simple and pretty straightforward. But again, if you look at that thing, you what's going on, bro. It's crazy. Now, even though I don't think I'm going to become a Demojico developer anytime soon, the programming language is actually not bad or completely useless for that matter. In fact, one way I see this actually being very useful is if you want to go ahead and obfuscate your code, obfuscating meaning hide your code so that people don't know what they're looking at. Even for someone that's like a massive programmer and like is super good at programming, if they see that code, they, they they won't know they'll be like what in the world am i looking at if you enjoyed the video make sure you go ahead and hit that like button down below and if you're new to the channel welcome go ahead and hit that subscribe button and while you're down there you might as well turn on notifications for videos because i've been uploading pretty frequently and that way you're aware or you know whenever i release something new and yeah see you guys next time Peace. Sound right, boys.